glad to be able to speak about NAFTA, uh, an agreement that has had very important and grave implications for my country, specifically Mexico. I just want to say that very importantly, along with NAFTA, in Mexico, the collective land rights were cancelled through the modification of the Article 27 of the Mexican Constitution, and this is very important for the environment in Mexico. This was done to facilitate foreign direct investment operations by allowing collective lands, the ejidos, to be sold or rented or engaged for economic activities. Constitutional reforms to indigenous culture and rights, as demanded by the Zapatistas and the indigenous in Mexico, have, were cancelled. And this has, this provoked, as I said, the facilitation of foreign direct investment operations in Mexico. And by 1996, only two years after NAFTA, 15 U.S. timber companies already started operating in Mexico. And mono plantations have surged, for example, eucalyptus, provoking erosion of lands, water being soaked up. And this is being accelerated with plants like the Plan Puebla Panama. Mexico used to have the community land that we call the ejidos, where all the people was able to arrive and have their agriculture, and they were given any title of anything. All those people with this reform was displaced for the land. It was the, really when the immigration started to have this uh, uh, figure, because uh, more than one million, three hundred people was displaced for the land, and they were arriving to the border looking for a job. This panel. Um the environment is a big topic in Mexico, and Mexico is the center of origin for um, maize, um, where the crop was first domesticated. There are, depending on how you define the term, 40 to 50 um, native land races of maize that are endemic to the region, were developed in the region, and um, cultivated over thousands of years by generation after generation of farmers um, selecting seeds um, that would thrive in the particular environment, agroecological conditions in which they lived and serving the various purposes for which maize was used. Out of that came a rich, um, um, very nutritious uh, food staple that is now a worldwide um, resource. Um, the most diverse producers, th those growing the greatest diversity of land races, are the poorest. That's not surprising. They live in the poorest conditions. Um, they live on the poorest lands. Um, they tend to be often in the indigenous communities. Um, and the darkened states here, um, on the top left is the poverty levels, and in the bottom right is corn production. Uh, the land, number of land races, the diversity of land races. Um, one recent study, an attempt to try to look at this, found that the, most, the, the producers with the highest level of diversity, which was about two-thirds of the producers, had shown in the 10-year period, 1990 to 2000, encompassing NAFTA, increased production. That is, out of desperation, it is understood, they increased their planting of corn despite the fact that the price crashed. Um, they suffered the highest levels of poverty, and they did show high levels of internal migration and, more recently, international migration. The fear here is that if these biodiverse maize farmers leave the land, stop farming maize, stop passing down seed selection techniques from one generation to another, you could lose the, this rich diversity for good. It isn't just that the price of maize fell, which it did, 50%, um, but the crops they could have diversified into on the lands they had, coffee and beans, also fell dramatically, 66% and 44%. Um, more dramatic, the researchers felt, in this community was the loss of local markets. Maseca is a large um, uh, privatized um, company selling maize flour and masa for making um, tortillas. Um, it is one of two companies in Mexico that controls that market. And um, they've gone around and basically taken over the tortilla chain in Mexico so that they supply with year-round contracts all the, torti all the tortilla makers in Sotiapan 
and local farmers can't even sell their own maize in their own markets. Um, they found that real household income in the NAFTA period had fallen 70 percent. Um, GMOs and NAFTA um, and the environment in this context have been the grand opening of the Mexican market to U.S. maize. Uh, the final opening is January 1st of 2008. Um, there are at least seven to nine million tons, somewhere in that range per year of maize flowing across the border, that number going from almost zero in 94 to this really high number right now. Um, and of course, maize has a, an, an extremely significant position um, within Mexican culture. We heard about sin maíz no hay país, that without maize there is no country, um, is a, an important movement right now in Mexico. Um, Many of the peoples that live in Mexico have creation myths centered on maize. Uh, Somos gente de maíz, this phrase means we're, we're people of maize. Uh, their maize is central in Mexican food and in culture. The, 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 the U.S. is today the most, if not one, if not a single one, supplier of those commodities to Mexico. But before NAFTA, we were that too. I mean, 95 or to 98 percent of the of the imports of Mexico of corn, yellow corn, came from the U.S. and two and three percent came from Argentina. So when NAFTA came, although we increased our volume of exports to Mexico, it was not because we displaced Argentina. It was because we displaced the local production of corn. Nosotros. Exportamos los mexicanos. Las exportaciones, las tres primeras exportaciones son cerveza, tomate y tequila. Y nuestras importaciones son granos básicos, trigo, arroz, sorgo, soya, alimentos básicos carnes, lácteos. Lo que nosotros importamos es de seguridad alimentaria para el país, seguridad nacional. Y aunque yo considero bebidas estratégicas, la cerveza y el tequila, ¿eh? que ustedes importan de México, no son de seguridad nacional. No veo a los Marines tomando la frontera mexicana para asegurar el suministro de cerveza y de tequila. Nos dijeron también que el NAFTA iba a contribuir a arraigar la gente en su tierra y que iba a mejorar las condiciones de vida. Sin embargo, ya se ha dicho mucho, el NAFTA expulsa bueno, más de 300 campesinos cada día. En 2002, que son los últimos datos que hice el cálculo, por cada contenedor de 30 toneladas de maíz, por cada tráiler de 30 toneladas de maíz que ustedes nos enviaban a México, nosotros les devolvíamos dos indocumentados. Es el desplazamiento de la mano de obra del campo producido por el NAFTA. Uh, bring to you some general information about the impact of NAFTA on Mexican agriculture. Mexico had a loss of five million producers and workers in agriculture. Uh, here we are comparing data between the prices for corn producers, the agricultural income, the agricultural cost, and the tortilla prices. So, uh, tortilla prices and the purchase power of the minimum salary in Mexico in '94, uh, for one minimum salary, a, a family could buy 16 kilograms of tortillas, and in 2007, less than six kilos of tortilla. So that shows a really loss of, of purchase power. That's a very important issue because 
because my neoclassical friends always miss, <laughs> are saying that I'm not right. Because the cars, cars are now cheaper. <laughs> and I have to say, okay, is that right? But we are talking about food. You can see that clothes uh, or textiles uh, are the only products that don't have uh, much increase during the last years. You can see the promedium price, it's a um, bigger um, uh, blue line, and the red line are the prices for food, for basic food. And all of that you can see the increase of the tortilla prices. So that's the plastics. That's really a problem in the vegetable exporting regions. Of taking maize from northern Mexico and turning it into ethanol and, and sending that ethanol to the United States. The key challenge is how do we guard maize diversity? 